Welcome to the Leadership Zone. Today I have Nessa Cronin with me. Nessa, I've been following Nessa for a very long time. We were just talking about it before we pressed record on social media. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today is how we present at work and how that links to our professionalism and how it isn't equal for everybody depending on your body shape, your body size, the type of access you might need, whether you're in a wheelchair or you might need something that's more comfortable. We're going to talk about how that impacts people at work and how we all know presenting professionally is important, but what do we mean by professional and is it having the impact we want to? And are we going in wearing clothes that make us uncomfortable? And that's the kind of stuff we're going to talk about today. But before we do, Nessa, will you tell everybody a little bit about you so that they get a sense of who you are, besides the fact that I was stalking your uh, social media accounts for years, and then we, we can see where our conversation goes. Yeah, perfect. Well, okay, so I, in my past, I've been a retailer, I suppose I am still a retailer, but I am very interested in, what well, I'm interested in, my purpose, let's say, my drive and my why is regarding fashion and the inclusivity or the rather the non-inclusivity of fashion depending on women's size and shape and all that and men as well you know I think women get bogged down in thinking that oh and men's clothes are just so simple they're not like men come in all different shapes and sizes as well It's a problem within the fashion industry for both genders, but I think more so for women Mm -hmm. because women's bodies tend to change more, let's say. So I've always been involved in retail and in clothing, but when I had my boutique, let's say, and I used to show new stock on social media, and I'm a size 12 and I try it on and I'd say this dress comes from a size 8 to a size 20, I kind of very quickly realised, hang on, that's of no good. That information as a sentence doesn't tell my size 20 what that dress is going to look like on her. It's all very well. I have the dress available in size 20 for her, but she needs to be able to see that on a body that she can relate to and mm-hmm. she can't relate to, to mine, you know? So that became a very important part of my work and it became a very important part of how I grew my social media was that I would bring other people in or I'd hire models or I'd ask other influencers who were, you know, a size 18 or 20 to come in and model clothes for me because I always felt that inclusion was very important in fashion as much as I could make it. And also visibility. You know, I understood that people needed to, to see themselves being represented and not themselves because like I was saying earlier on to you everybody every single person has a different body anyway so you're never going to see something say oh that will look exactly like that on me it won't because you're a totally different person but to do with size and shape and particularly body shape you know so if if some body shapes have large hips some body shapes have large busts you know all that kind of thing to see that represented it was very important that I represented my clothes in my boutique as well as I could you know like in an inclusive way let's say. I noticed that when I was was watching the influencers you brought in and I was noticing well first of all without you ever saying like I don't think you ever said that those words up front online at least not that I heard but what I saw was people with different bodies were coming in and saying what they loved and why they loved it but also what they didn't love and why they didn't love it And at the time, it was the only place I was seeing that in an Irish setting that wasn't a setting specifically for one size. So it was the only place that served both sizes that I saw that type of, I mean, both sides, I mean, like both sides of the spectrum that were actually thinking and having these conversations. And when I think about clothes, so we know that there's a gender difference. So for any of the men listening, you're probably like, oh, more of the gender difference. But we know that in workplaces, how women dress is rated and monitored and discussed more than how men dress. We know that. But we also know that if men are struggling with how they present themselves for different reasons, they might have a medical condition, they might be of a particular size, then when they're wearing clothes that don't feel good... Mm -hmm. size a second they're going to be distracted irritated frustrated and so the clothes we wear and how we feel not just what they look like externally we know that's monitored but also how we feeling them is going to impact how well we interact with 100 percent 100 percent i mean i'm always saying to customers i'm always saying to the women that i work with that if you leave the house in the morning to go to work 
feeling that you look okay and feeling comfortable in yourself and in your clothes. Like we have, to, it's the one thing that we all have to do. We have to put clothes in our body. To go to work, we have to put clothes in our body. And if you feel uncomfortable in your clothing, if you feel that something is too tight or too this or too that or too whatever or too small or too big, if you leave the house feeling amazing in what you're wearing, then it's very hard to have a bad day. Like mm. it really is very hard. Whereas if you start your day getting into your car or getting onto the Lewis or whatever, feeling, oh my God, this stress is cutting into me or this belt is hitting me in the wrong place or whatever, or you're just uncomfortable, then things can go, like little small things then, it's just adding onto the pressure, you know? Mm. Whereas if your clothes are the most important part, like <laughs> they're as important as brushing your teeth and washing your face mm. in the morning, you know? Setting yourself up for the day correctly in how you're looking and what you're wearing is makes a massive impact on the rest of your day, huge. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because over COVID, we all got more comfortable. That's, I think mm. there was like, I can't remember where I read this, probably some crappy magazine, but like there was a decrease in women wearing heels to work, for instance. I can't remember where I read it. And I remember thinking, oh, is that true? And then I went, oh, you actually haven't worn heels to work in like a certain amount of time. And I think there's something about the kind of conforming. So what is professional? What is beautiful? I was thinking about how when I was growing up, I was taught that you should always, regardless what size you are, dress to look smaller. So it didn't matter what size you are. The aim was to look less, not more. And at the time, that wasn't as predominant for men. But we actually know it is now. The research is telling us young men and men of all ages are facing similar kind of preoccupations with how they're being perceived. And in fact, for men, I think that the messaging is even more confusing because actually you're a man so you should be big but mm. not fat but big like it, it's even more confusing whereas women's message is quite simple you need to be as small as you possibly can and that's all that matters you know whereas the messaging for men is you need to be big you need to be muscly but also you need to be there's a lot more conditioning maybe even for men mm. which is interesting like but women absolutely like I remember lots of people have often mentioned back to me once off the cuff, once I said on social media years ago, I was trying on, I was deciding between two dresses or something. And lots of the people came in, lots of messages came in saying, oh, you look smaller in that one. You should wear that one. And I came on social media and said, wow, like, because it genuinely has never been so I'm very, very lucky and I'm very blessed in my mindset with how I view my body and fashion. I don't think like that. I don't think, oh, I'll, I'll wear this dress because it makes me look smaller. I've never had that thought. And I said that on social media and the amount of people that still to this day, like six years later, say to me, I remember the day you said, I don't dress myself to make myself look smaller. Mm. And it really struck me that, oh, my God, I do. And how do you not? And what is, what is the magic? How do I get there? And listen, I don't know how you get there. I was just lucky, I suppose, that it was never a thing. It was never a priority for me. For me, it was about the clothes. It wasn't about how the clothes made me look. It was about, do I love this as a piece? But it, it is a message, a societal message that is a problem for women. And it's very confusing and just, you know, it's... it's this obsession with being smaller and taking up less space and and th there's a weird flip side because I, I teach the women in leadership a diploma with the professional academy at UCD and one of the really interesting things I talk about is this incident I had where I went into a room there was seven or eight men six women I think around that and I was one of the women and I was dressed for what I would consider like an office job that I was presenting but like I was professional but not keynote speaker right you know yeah. like, I had, like I had two different standards a colleague of mine was dressed like a keynote speaker right all of the men in the room either had runners or like comfortable shoes and the only person that had anywhere near a suit I think was because his bags were left or something so he had to wear the suit he had or for travel or something ridiculous and every other male was dressed because they yeah. were like not in the public side it was a yeah. house day one yes. of the women was dressed almost to be invisible so she like she could have been going to the gym no issue with that so there's these two women who are dressed for keynote speaking there's one woman who it looks like she's hiding there was me who was kind of like I was going to work so I was dressed for what I think is a work office mm -hmm. and then there was another woman who was kind of similarly dressed to me and what I noticed was that in that room what the men wore meant nothing to anybody 
Exactly. But we were classified. So I was a speaker. So was my colleague. We had dressed very differently. And I remember thinking, I wish you had told me what you were wearing because I would usually give someone the heads up if I'm going a little over. And I know the person, how they normally dress. So I was a bit like, I wish you told me you were dressing up. The other person who was dressed up, she was one of the more new people to that team and was like organizing it. So, and I walked in and immediately I saw insecurity, right? And I'm not saying it's accurate. I'm not saying it's right. Mm -hmm. But what Mm -hmm. I saw was, Two people were overdressed for the scenario. Mm -hmm. One person was trying to kind of blend it in with the lads, actually. When I say she didn't care how she dressed, I don't mean she didn't care. I just mean she didn't dress for a particular setting, almost like the men did, actually. And then I had thought about what I was going to wear. And I was like, I'm going to wear professional clothes, but I'm not dressed. I'm not keynote speaking. I'm, I'm doing some training. And the other person that was dressed that way. And I remember knowing in that moment that people were reading how we looked, not like our body, not like whether we were pretty, not none of that. But they were going to make assumptions about the differences in how we were dressed because I was making assumptions. So mm-hmm. if I was making those assumptions, other people were. Everybody else, yeah. yeah, and I remember checking, you know, like as the day went on, it was like a five day thing. So as the days went on, you know, it was really interesting. The women neutralized in our clothing. Mm-hmm. The men okay. remained wearing whatever they wanted. You know? And I was I was going to say, I wonder, were the men making judgments? Because they were all casually and comfortably dressed. Were yeah. they making perceptions and judgments on how the women were? Were they, ju- do you know what I mean? Or was yeah, it the no, women doing it to the women? I didn't get near that because I was able to ask the women because it came up, which again tells us something. But what did happen was the reason I know the guy in the suit left his, had to wear the suit because his bags were late or whatever was because somebody said to him so nobody said to any of us and two of the women were dressed up far more than he was said to him you're a bit dressed up for this aren't you so somebody made a joke one of the men made a joke to the other male and he said oh, my luggage got delayed I have to wear the suit you're not that important like he made a joke about only wearing suits right. and things right which I think is what drew my attention to it more but nobody said anything to any of the women and the way we were dressed nobody right. But it was mm-hmm. clearly be, something was being logged somewhere. And yes. I, I remember walking away and going, no matter what we do in that room, there isn't an equity. Because even amongst the women, we don't know what the kind of norm of this dress is. So it took the five days. And by the fifth day, we were all, I would say, it looks like we work together because we, you know, people had adapted or <laughs> blended into each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. But what was interesting was the blend, the men had already known going in and they weren't afraid of over or underdressing. But some of the women were afraid of underdressing. Some of us were afraid of overdressing. And it was it was just this really interesting moment where I realized I spent more time worrying about what I was wearing mm-hmm. than about the quality of my work mm-hmm. when I was preparing for the trip. And then from that day now, you're not going to like this, definitely not as somebody into fashion. I now mm-hmm. have a uniform. I will mm-hmm. wear black or navy to work and sometimes a heel, sometimes a flat form, if I like them or whatever, sometimes a runner. But I wear the same clothes for two yeah. weeks. So I don't have to think about them. This is just yeah. how I dress. I'm not thinking about the yeah. menu. And then the second reason is that I don't end up in a setting where I can't rework clothes. I ended up in Finland during snow with like daisy summer pumps because I didn't really. <laughs> so like there was a couple of things where I was like, I can wear a boot and I can wear a shoe. Yes. But I then look at like my brothers or my dad. And, and while like one of my brothers very into fashion, they would think about clothes. Okay. Not in the way I do. They don't have to, like, it doesn't matter if they turn up in shorts to that event. Yeah. They, they yeah. won't lose credibility, even if it's not correct. Whereas on the other side, we do know women are losing credibility. And then there's this other thing about size, and I'm going to put it to you. During the summer, people can wear lots of cute outfits women can to work. If you have certain body parts that are bigger than the rest of your body, mm-hmm. that outfit then looks really sexual, or it looks like it mm-hmm. looks like you've dressed to be seen. Right, yes. which is ridiculous because you're just putting clothes on your body. Yes. But then this is this extra layer that I know happens in the summer with women, and I know men have it as well. But they found some. There's some solutions for men, but women are constantly thinking about their summer work clothes. And I, I've been in so many <laughs> summer work clothes conversations because we're trying to I balance know. being I know. cool and relaxed with not looking like you're on the beach or looking for some kind of male attention or some kind of like unnecessary focus on your body. I was like, that's friggin' exhausting. And that's not even that you're doing the job anymore. 
It is. It is exhausting. It is exhausting. And I mean, you know, you'd wonder like, and to do with size or having one. Yeah, like th that is such a big consideration for women about work clothes, because again, people would often ask me about advice on a work wardrobe. And I'm kind of going, God, is there such a thing anymore? You know, are there like, is there such a thing as work clothes? Can you not just wear the clothes in your wardrobe to work, you know? But there is a thing about, am I showing too much this or is this too tight on my bum or is this too thick? Yeah. And it is a thing that I don't think men experience in the same way at all. Like the female or the male gaze, isn't it? That, mm -hmm. Like that yeah. women are to be looked at uh, by men. But yeah, it is. It, listen, fashion is so complex it's one of the reasons why i love it because it's so individual as well what you were saying there about having a uniform now for work where you just stick to the same thing absolutely like if you're not into fashion and you don't find any joy and although i'd love to help you find joy in your no, wardrobe so, so i'd say i do actually love style and i actually okay. i even did a course on it like i really love that but it doesn't add value to my work it, yes. it, it pulls it so in my own life or for a wedding or for like my own thing even around the house like I buy what I call house outfits which are really comfortable but I think are really cute because I like something about them but for yeah. work yeah for easier me. yeah it can be easier to just say these are my work clothes and that will work with that and this will work with that and that will work with that what I'm always teaching women is what I kind of do when I go and do wardrobe makeovers with women is they show me their work clothes or they'll say something like oh don't mind that that's just my work clothes and sometimes their work clothes can have a lovely shirt in there you know mm -hmm. that I'm like have you ever worn that on a Saturday with your jeans and your runners and they're like oh god no that's my work shirt and I'm like but it's actually really nice and the print is lovely and the colour is great on you. So why don't you wear it with your jeans? They're like, oh my God, I've never thought of wearing it with my jeans, you know? So I try and teach women not to categorise, not to find, or the black blade, their black work blazer, wear a, and you're going out for drinks on Friday, wear your skinny jeans, heels, and a sexy black cami with your black work blazer, mm -hmm. you know, so that clothes don't just fall into the one category, that everything's getting multiple wears and living its best life. Your workplace are deserve to for drinks on Friday as well, you know. So. I and, and I think it's interesting because it's not that I wouldn't wear it outside of work. Mm -hmm. It's that I don't have to go through all my clothes to decide if something. To decide, is, yeah. Whatever yeah, yeah. No, I, I need it to be. But what I think is interesting is that something that can bring me so much joy personally can actually be something different. And I'm thinking also about like weight because we don't talk about weight with men a lot because women have been managing the weight conversation since the day they were born, usually. Mm -hmm. And actually, I heard someone recently say that somebody called their seven-month-old boy fat. I was like, what? Even if... I was like, and she goes, but what's worse is he's not only not fat, he's actually not fat. Like, she's like, it, it's a really weird thing. He's just not, like, skin and bones. Like, he's a healthy baby. So it's a really interesting... Yeah. Kind of dynamic of, of already commenting and I was thinking about the ultimate work argument in workplaces and it might not be the same with AC although I think it's still there which is men preferring a slightly hotter temperature than women and right. then place means that women are having to dress with the idea that they're going to have to wrap up to be in the AC environment while men are taking off and, and this isn't a man versus woman but it's a really interesting one men are taking off the layers and they can only go to their shirt if they walk around in their vest, we would have a comment on them. Yeah. And then women are bringing in layers to layer up so that they can yes. layer off. But this is a lot of extra effort just because there are the <laughs> invisible rules you're abiding by around what you can you know, and wear in a second. Totally. Yeah, totally. And the other thing is I was on a shopping trip recently with a girl and she liked that because of like in winter she can layer up and take off. In summer, she was her office has, has the AC on, so she's cold, let's yeah. say, yeah. but she doesn't want to layer up with the cardigan. She she just said to me, I just want to find some tops with sleeves. Yes. Now, trying to find a summer top with okay. sleeves, let me tell you, is a challenge. <laughs> you know, we found some, but yeah, most sleeveless, most summer tops. Yeah. Where you need a bit of warmth, actually, if you're in work, you know, you're, you still need to sleep and they're not to be found. So, yeah. And that's interesting because that also then links into things like whether people with tattoos want their tattoos visible at work or not. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. forget the workplace thing first, but like, do I want people to see the tattoo I got when I was 16 kind of thing? Yeah. And so then people are having to dress because they are managing 
something that they yes. well, I, I think it's just really interesting because we don't often think about professionalism leadership and clothing and yet we know women are repeatedly judged on their clothing more than other mm-hmm. things and their leadership is often not even accounted for until comments on their clothing have been made and we see that with like Hillary Clinton's piece as well mm-hmm. but then there's also this other side for let's say men where they are wearing what I think is like a uniform there was a joke recently that said were well, you at a wedding and did he have a navy suit and a brown pair of shoes and I can't say much because I bought my poor dad a navy suit not bought him but like I encouraged him to buy brown mm-hmm. you know so the, the the piece around like sometimes there isn't space for creativity in men's clothes either and this so this is the thing i was going to say when you said sometimes they have a uniform men do actually have a uniform like a uniform of it's the suit and work or it's jeans and a shirt or then it's shorts and t-shirt that's all they have to choose from you know <laughs> like personally i would die if that was all i had to choose from women actually have a lot more opportunity to express themselves you know and colors in men's clothing as well there's such lack of choice Mm. it's beige it's navy it's gray you might get a a red you know because it's strong i mean you do get a bit of pink now but not much choice wise there isn't the same choice that women have in terms of not looking like a uniform like it's trousers and a shirt. That's all they can do. We can do wide leg trousers. We can do cloth. We can, within each category, there's so many options. A shirt for a man is a shirt. A shirt for a woman can have puffy sleeves, can have short sleeves, can have a V-neck or can have buttons down the front, can be, that can be in different fabrics. It, it can be, there can be chiffon pleating down the front. There's so much choice for women that just isn't there for men. I sometimes wonder, is it just that men don't, care like do they not want the choice like if they had wanted the choice would they have kicked up about it and would there be actually more choice in in male clothing or not or do they just not think about it this is the point I suppose do they not think about their appearance let's say because it's not under the same scrutiny as females appearances I don't know and I think younger generations do that's definitely like I've noticed that and also I think like other countries outside of Ireland I noticed some more like male style in other countries yeah Um, so I don't think it's as simple as men as a group but I think there's something about how we're socialized to think about clothes and fashion yeah and those pieces because well a if there's limitations that's a starting point but also I remember somebody wearing a pink shirt and they asked him was he gay and it it was the weirdest like and and this wasn't like when I was 16 this is like in the last 10 years and I was like or pink with his outfit and he liked it you know but so Mm. there's still these kind of Mm -hmm. sense of of it might mean something about which I think is really interesting this assumption it means something about sexuality because you might want to express yourself in color or in clothing if people are listening and they're going oh my god finally either men or women and they're like oh somebody's saying the thing that I've been kind of like wondering about or, or kind of internalizing you know I'm not very good at clothes or can never find anything I like or I don't really have a great fashion sense I remember talking to somebody who said that and I was like well maybe you don't have choices around your fashion and if you're in another country you might feel really different about fashion like Mm -hmm. when I was 18 and I went to India my clothing changed massively that like after coming back not just because I liked their clothes but I saw clothes differently from them the colors and things like that colors yeah and the purpose of it, clothing was about like celebrating something as opposed to just like something I had to wear to look smaller in some way or something I had to and wear. For me, to... see, that's my thing in clothes. Clothes are about celebrating and expressing. Yeah. And, you know, they're such a source of joy for me. You know, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to pass that on to my clients and the people I work with to find joy because they are so expressive and you can literally be and there's such a non-committal way as well so like if you want to change your hair you have to commit to this hairstyle whether it's a colour or a cut for a long stretch of time for weeks you can just take something off you if you don't like it or if it makes you you can literally change you know in a second so they're so non-committal even and yet they just provide such freedom of expression really you know And it's funny, and I'll say this because I I think it will be helpful, especially for the female listeners, that often I hear people say, when I lose the weight, I will X, Y, and Z. And if you're in a workplace and you exist, which you do if you're listening to this podcast, probably, losing the weight won't actually give you the confidence you want. Like I've worked with the people, so have you, Ness. What you need to do 
is honor what you are and who you are and how you are. And in your workplace, you can lose all the weight and you might get all these compliments or, or what, you know, nobody will notice, whichever. But when you dress like you're important, and this is like for the men as well, when you dress in a way that you're, that you value your body and yourself, you immediately hold yourself and your authority differently, which is one of the biggest influencing tools you can have. And it's really interesting to me, we spend so much time and money into like tactics and techniques to be influential while we are walking into a room without honoring ourselves or holding ourselves with the appreciation or respect that we deserve, you're never going to be optimally like influential or impactful if you are then also carrying this idea that you should be less or when you do this, you'll be good enough or I won't buy the clothes now for my size because one day I might be this other size. So what, you're just going to wait one day until you're that size to be like- I know, I know, I mean, you're like, yeah. Everything you just said there, it's it's incredible, isn't it? That mm-hmm. women treat themselves like that and that they won't buy the new dress or go on the holiday or whatever until they're a different size in their body, you know. So I'm all about teaching women how to accept the body today, you know, because you can't hate your way to loving your body. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You can't end up in a place of love and acceptance by hating and not accepting it. You have to start and you can only start with the body that you have today. Mm-hmm. So you have to treat that body really well and dress it really well and be really, really nice to it and speak to it like you would your best. All those kind of things that I'm always preaching about. But yeah, this thing of, of waiting, waiting to lose the weight is so apparent in so many women. And it's absolute nonsense. And it is like it's almost like it's held up in front of a but like the magazine, everything is full of like diet, 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 diet. It's about changing. We're under this pressure to change ourselves all the time. Whereas in actual fact, all we need to do is just accept ourselves because mm-hmm. losing weight isn't going to bring you to a happier mindset. It really isn't. Like we used to, I've had clients from size eight to size 28 and every single one of them has a problem with their body, regardless of their size. The size eight woman has just as many hangups about The overhang on her jeans, the bulge at the back of her bra, her ankles, her tummy, her hips, her whatever. She's the same hang ups. So being thin doesn't guarantee body acceptance at all. Not by a long shot. That is work that you have to do inside your head. It's Mm -hmm. not about your physical appearance. It has to happen inside, you know, and Mm -hmm. it's really important to start it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to add two things before we finish. So. Part of the reason about thinking about this is if you are preoccupied with having to be less something or more something, you're just not going to be very effective. And that's like in your workplace, if you're not comfortable, you aren't dressing yourself in a way that you feel honours who you are. You're just not going to be as effective. We know this, like there's some interesting studies about convincing people that they were wearing something worth loads of money versus wearing something that wasn't, yeah. how they behave differently and their experiences were different. Fascinating. But the second thing around inclusion, and this is, I think, really interesting, because even in the diploma for diversity and inclusion work that I teach on, constantly comes up fat phobia and how we have still normalized that there's this idea about the right kind of body. If you believe yourself to be an inclusive and effective leader and and you want to be someone who has a positive impact, but your conversation with yourself is critical, is derogatory, is not accepting then you can do whatever you want for other people. It's going to leak. And I think exactly. that's what people are really shocked at when I'm like, you might think you you believe these things, but if you treat yourself this way, that's what you're leaking in the world. Exactly. That's what people are picking up on. Your comments exactly. about, I shouldn't eat this, or your comments yes. about when I'm that size. Like, that's yes. what people hear. It's not the things you think they hear. Exactly. So if they see you saying, oh my God, that's amazing on you and it looks great on you and you're trying to be nice to somebody and compliment them. And then, and let's say that person is a bigger person than you, but they see you treating yourself in a, oh, I shouldn't have this now. And, oh, God, no, I'll wait. I'm not going to buy that because I'm, I'm on a diet at the moment. I'm going to slim down. I'm going to change. Then you're naturally leaving that person with the, well, it doesn't matter what you just said to that person about how beautiful she is and how well she looks and how gorgeous the dress is on her. Because all she hears is, well, if you don't think that you're good enough, how can you possibly think that I am? Oh, so no. it's, you have to be nice to yourself. You have to accept yourself before you can spread it out. Mm-hmm. And you are wasting so much energy. And I'm not even saying like on the fashion stuff, you're wasting energy preoccupied with things you can't change immediately. Yeah. You're yourself less than 
you're not going to go out there and have the biggest impact and create the kind of results you want to create, whether it's at work or it's in your life or it's just in society. So it's really important that we think about how all these little things influence how we hold mm-hmm. ourselves and therefore mm-hmm. how we proceed through the world. So mm-hmm. Lanessa, I'm going to say thank you for joining me today. And for any women that are listening that are thinking, oh, I have, you know, I've had a child and I'm feeling difficult about my body or menopause or I'm just not in my flow or I feel like I need a glow up then actually the steps you take is something like this to give yourself the boost rather than like a big strong regiment that is going to take all this energy away from you and give you very little back it's worth doing things like this that help you bring joy into your day-to-day and help you free up some energy for your workplace totally 100 percent. okay thank Thank you you so so much much. thanks a million bye-bye